everybody, welcome back to another episode of FSI DFS Fantasy Baseball Picks. I'm your host, Mike Rover31. Got a pretty nice slight slate here for Monday. I got seven games. Uh, so let's uh, jump into it and um, break it on down. So the first game, we have the Colorado Rockies going to the Boston Red Sox. We have Connor Seabull and James Paxson. Connor Seabull is an absolute no, especially a right-handed with all left-handed power. The wind's blowing out here, 73 degrees, so um, definitely no to him. Paxson, I think, is probably going to be the best pitcher on the slate. We have a really unbalanced slate here. We have about five good pitchers, and everybody else is horrible, which puts us with so many great hitting situations. With no value pitchers, really, it's going to be a tough slate. Uh, I think Paxson at 9-3 is uh, probably going to be most people's SP1 here. And then the left to figure out, are they going to pair it with a higher price pitcher or take a chance on a punt or, or see what's going on? But I think Paxson is the safest one against the Rockies here. They just continue to lose bats out of their lineup. Kron's on the IL. Um, Blackman hurt himself and it's going to be on the IL for a while. Chris Bryant's on the IL. They did bring up a new guy, Coco Montes who I don't think is in either um, player pool, but he's one to to watch as a as prospect. And uh, Nolan Jones and Doyle continue to to produce here also, but I think Paxton will be fine here. So no to Seaball, really like Paxton. And then I think bat-wise, Colorado would just be an extreme leverage stack um, against probably a highly owned Paxton. It's a small slate, so I, I completely get it. Uh, he's lefty, so I'd, you know, the, the righties like so Tovar is probably going to be a hitting like up in the second spot. Gritchick continues to hit lefties well, um, and I think I think their normal catcher is, is banged up too because I don't even see him in the uh, starting lineup in, in Diaz there. So wins will be in. So I mean it's it, there's a ton of value on Colorado. So if you know if they're like your head stack or you're like if you're not using Paxton and you need some villains and you, you think that he's going to have an off day and the righty power can get to him with the wind blowing out then i get it uh boston i think is my second favorite stack on the slate here they have a 6.21 total here just give me the lefties redugo yoshida turner's actually had a couple of home runs recently don't love the right and ready but colorado is so bad with the starting pitcher in their bullpen then he's definitely in play here Rafael Devers is probably the best play on the slate here with the lefty with all his power. And then Duvall has been back. And he hasn't been lights out like he was before he got injured, but, you know, he's been doing all the things. So he's definitely going to be a day-to-day -day player. They released Tapia, so definitely means that he's going to be in the lineup going forward, probably as their everyday outfielder there. And then um, Casas has power at first base. He's cheap at 2-8. The rest of the guys, Arroyo... Reese McGuire, a catcher, maybe there's a cheap one there at 2-4. Uh, Kiki Hernandez, not interested in. Next game, we have San Francisco and St. Louis Cardinals. We have Logan Webb and Matthew Libertor. Webb has had his struggles, but so have St. Louis. They have just been so bad recently with this lineup. They are almost falling to Chicago White Sox levels. We were dissing on them because they were, you know, look like they could be potentially be World Series contenders and just completely fell apart. Same thing for St. Louis. Yeah, they've got a couple injuries, but nobody major. Um, and I, I just don't know why they can't hit or why they can't put it together. They've got some, I mean, Newt Bar is out of the lineup and um, there's a couple other guys, but these guys have hit at times. Jordan Walker went down, he came back up. But he, a lot of righties here against Webb, who's good against righties. So I think Webb's definitely in play, but he's probably out of all the higher price guys. Um, my fourth favorite at 10 3 here on DK, but definitely in play. Uh, there are some strikeouts in the St. Louis lineup. And then Libertor, like we don't really have any, many cheap options. And at 6 4, we have seen San Francisco struggle sometimes, but they'll throw like probably all right handers at them. It looks like Slater's going to lead off like he's a left-handed specialist. Uh, Estrada, Flores, a left-handed specialist. J.D. Davis, Hanniger. Uh, Conforto might be the only lefty in this, and maybe Wade in this whole lineup. Everybody else is going to be right-handed. So I might take some shots on, on Libertor and GPPs just to have, because uh, uh, San Francisco can have some strikeouts and can um, – struggle at times especially on the road so um 
But I'm not saying by any means he's safe. He might be able if he just gives five or six strikeouts and gives up two or three runs and and can make it like five innings. And you know if that gets me in the bats I need. Um, I don't think this is a cash play by any means, but in a GPP then I'm good with it. But on the San Francisco side of it, I would stick to Estrada doesn't get pinch hit for usually. Davis doesn't get pinch hit for. Haniger should be safe. Schmidt is definitely safe. And Patrick Baylor, the switch hitting catcher, is just a phenomenal. If you can pay 3K for a catcher, like I really like him. Like Sable was the guy that I really liked. And then um was it Bart that they were so high on? But he got sent down because Bailey's just been the answer and you know, ride the hot hand. It's just been amazing the things he's doing. St. Louis side, great GPP stack here, you know, because one of these days they're gonna go off. Probably not today, but it could be. So, you know, it's always worth probably just throwing a St. Louis stack in there for a dollar. Um, but of course, in a 162 game season, you might lose $162 because if they only go off like five times, but I think they got more potential than that. So, I uh, just small slate, keep them back in mind if you're multi entering in GPPs, but uh, overall, they're not a priority, not even as one offs. Next up, we have uh, the Angels and the Rangers. Tyler Anderson, Dane Dunning. Tyler Anderson's a no here. I think Texas probably the third favorite stack on on the slate here. They have been hitting well recently. Love the righties against Anderson. He's been giving up so much to um, power and hits the right-handed batters. Dane Dunning on the other side is he's been a serviceable pitcher from the bullpen, turned into a starter, but he just doesn't have anything that really makes me feel good. And this Angels lineup, again, they're, they're much better than St. Louis in, in producing runs. But, you know, it's just they have a 4.23 total here. St. Louis is St. Louis is 3.81. That shows you how much they like St. Louis there. But, yeah, so I'm not really on Dunning here. I, I just think even – even in a smaller slate, I'd rather play the three guys that I have in the low level. I think those are the ones that I've kind of decided on. But, you know, if you're mass multi-entering, you don't cross him off your player pool. He's not C-ball. He's not Caprellian. He's not going to be the Philly guys that are doing a bullpen thing. He's not Anderson on the other side of this game. So I think he's playable, but I'm just not as interested in him here. Angels, I don't know if I could go full Angels stack against him. Maybe Otani, Stasty, the, the catcher there. If um, I don't see uh, the one cheaper guy um, in their lineup here that starts with an M. But so, yeah, I'd kind of probably avoid the Angels in the, this, um, this slate here. But Texas, yes. Uh, Simeon. They're, they're expensive though so like to get good pitching in you're not gonna be able to play all of them i would probably play some in or seager seager is lefty and lefty but i still think he'll be okay there low i'd probably skip over garcia if you can get to it but young and heim and garver i mean you can only play one catcher on Fanduel. you can do two so i mean that's really where i'd look and duran i like i don't don't be afraid to wrap around this is is weak oil Duran is a really good young player. He's only three, two, he fills a shortstop. Um, so, you know, I could put him in my stack there instead of Seager and I'm saving like 2.7 K and, and that's huge in this slate here. So keep an is equal Duran um, in mind too, as you're building your Ranger stacks. Cincinnati Reds and the Kansas city Royals, Luke Weaver is at Grinky. Most slates you would just cross both these pitchers off. But it is the Reds outside of Great American Small Park. And it is um, Zach Greinke outside of Great American Small Park. Uh, so, you know, if this was in Cincinnati, these would both be absolutely no. Uh, the wind is blowing in here. Both these teams are very low on a WRC+. Plus. They have strikeouts in their lineup. And um, the Royals have some some injuries and some, some guys out like Pascatino. The Reds do also, but some of the guys they brought up to fill in have been decent. So I think this serves two purposes here. Here, this is this is your bargain bin at the dollar store here. Luke Weaver should be able to get you five strikeouts against Kansas City. Zach Greinke won't get you five strikeouts, but he should go deep enough in the game against them to eat some innings to probably get the quality start on FanDuel. So I 
I don't I would not play either one of them as your SP1 on FanDuel. But if you need a cheap SP2 and and cheap is really not cheap, we're talking 7.5 and 7k here. Um cheaper, I think that these two guys are safer in Libertor and Weaver has the strikeout upside and Grenke, I think, has um the chance to put up less runs and go deeper into the game and potentially get the win. So bat wise, I think they both work also because you know you got some cheap fill-ins here, like Friedel leading off. I mean, everybody's on De La Cruz here, but he's like four three. But like Will Benson, he hits down in the order like six or seventh, but he's two six. He's been doing an amazing job recently and granky has been kind of a reverse blitz pitcher so don't like poo poo the righties like i think they'd be fine too so you know if you want to build at the bottom of this lineup and go like benson even though he's lefty still be fine newman like fairchild stevenson now you you know you take the san francisco i got a catcher you're not paying three seven a catcher here so you know there's a guy at two six three k two four i mean they might be really cheap fill-ins uh for your lineup here same thing on the kansas city side here against luke weaver you have Prado leading off at um, 3-1. Uh, Perez, I'd probably skip over. Too expensive. MJ Melendez, 3K. Bobby Witt, 5-7. Probably skip him also. But Massey is filling a second base at 2-3. Um, Drew Walters will probably be like one of the best. Not that he's going to be great, but he's, a, he's 2-1. And can probably get you like 7 or 8 points. So he's going to be on both sides a high point per dollar play. Um, Nicky Lopez, you know, Jackie Bradley Jr. can't will probably have like five strikeouts, but might like get one walk and steal two bases. So, you know, the Kansas City Royals are definitely decent fill ins here. Uh, next game we have is a Tampa Bay Rays going to the Oakland Athletics. So, definitely, um, Pitching Park, Zach Eflin, most expensive pitcher on the slate and probably should be everybody's SP1, but it's hard to fit him in price-wise. So I, I will have some exposure to him, but I will probably go down more with um, some of uh, the other options too, just to try to get some of these amazing bats in. Uh, Caprelli on the other side is a no. Uh Tampa Bay, it's got to be my favorite stack here because Caprillion's bad and so is the bullpen. So, you know, load up on them, whoever you can get in. Don't be afraid to go further on down, like taking Marheya catcher at 2-3 here. He's a switch hitter. He's got some power on occasion. Taylor Walls, Luke Riley is a lefty and righty matchup can save you, you know, probably almost about 2K from playing like Randy Arez Arena. And, you know, everybody's in a good matchup here, Paredes. So don't have to necessarily play the most expensive guys. You can get some of the cheaper guys in, too, and make the stack really work here and not have to, like, you know, take a, a ton of punts for your final bats to get in or take, like, Weaver, Granky, or Libertor's SP2. Oakland on the other side, I think – um Makes for a, a definitely a sneaky GPP fill-ins. They're very cheap here. Ruiz can steal bases. Noda and Brown have actually been pretty solid recently. And, you know, I, I wouldn't play the guys down to his bot like Kevin Smith. or He's like more of a defensive play. Uh, Langer, a catcher at 2-4. I mean, I think there's better options out there. I'd take Mejia on the other side for 2-3 for like, you know, a dollar or $100 less there. So... Uh, next up, we have Philadelphia and Arizona. We have um, it's a bullpen name for Philadelphia, so we're gonna completely cross them off. Tommy Henry on the other side, not interested in. There's a 10 total in this game, there will be runs. It's a great hitting environment. So, uh, Schwarber's fine, lefty and lefty. Castellanos is amazing, probably as a righty there, batting second. Harper can hit lefties also. Turner's starting to get better. Real Muto's starting to get better. Alex Brahms back in. Um, Sosa run three at the bottom is just 2k if you need a punk guy in a great situation with a splits advantage. So, um, that's where I'm looking on Philly. They're my favorite GPP stack, and Arizona is my fourth favorite stack here against this bullpen game. I just love Arizona, I play them every single slate and just stack different teams with them. So, you know, probably go Marte, Carroll, um. Walker, Pav Smith might lead off instead of Marte. You'll just have to see who's there. Like, there's just so many good players on this Arizona team to mix and match in with any other lineup just to to make it work. They're just such a um, 
a well-rounded team with righties and lefties this year and producing consistently for it. Final game is Miami Marlins and Seattle Mariners. A great pitching matchup again. This has a 7.5 total here, a 3.5 for Miami and a 3.9 for Seattle. Luzardo and Bryce Miller. Seattle has been really struggling recently hitting, so I think Luzardo is going to be in play here. Definitely love the price at 9.6. And then Bryce Miller has been a very talented young prospect in the Mariners organization and um, definitely against the Miami team that can struggle at times, especially on the road. Um, even though their home hitting environment isn't great, uh, I think both pitchers are in play here and uh, definitely could play a hedge stack on either side in case one of the pitchers struggles in your GPPs. But overall, I think the pitching in this game is what you're looking to play. So let's look at some builds again. Very difficult. You can go so many different ways. For DK, I'm giving you your two pitchers. I'm taking Miller and I'm taking Paxton. And I am going to take... Um, Texas here. Not Texas. I'm taking Tampa Bay here. And then I'm going to fill in with just cheap players that I can find probably from Kansas City. So uh, Paxton Miller... Um, Give me Franco, Eris, Rosarina, low. Like I said, you can fill in here with so many different uh, cheap options. Um, you can put Riley here as your final outfielder. He also is first base, so if you don't want to play uh, Prado. But Kansas City makes for great cheap fill-ins here. With Tampa Bay, you can get these two pitchers in. I'm making it a priority to pay up for pitching because there's so many bad pitchers. That And I think people will be spread out on so many different bats. If I can nail two solid pitchers with the floor in cash, that's where I want to go. I think Tampa Bay has some great values. And like I said, Mayora, May, May, Mahia here as catcher is another great value. Fill in with a couple of Kansas City guys. It's got a nice stack for cash. For FanDuel, I'm going to take Paxson. And then I can get um, a San Francisco and uh, Texas stack here, I just need to take one one off in um, outfield. So uh, I found a really cheap guy that I like there, almost minimum price. And, um, you know, that's how I, I I really like having San Francisco and Texas, how they pair together on FanDuel very well. For GPP, and I'm going really GPP here, playing game theory. I'm taking Luzardo. I like this as a pitcher. Um, I'll probably take one of the low guys there. Um, so it gives me as many Texas bats as I can. So give me Haim, Semyon, Young. I'll probably take Garcia in the outfield. And then I'll probably, I will probably won't be able to get the Seagers. So I'll probably have to go with um, Duran as my other shortstop. But I am going to fill in with Oakland A's. I'm going to take the chance that Eflin has an off game and that the A's lefties have um, go off. It's a GPP, you know, it's a small slate. I think Eflin might be the highest home pitcher. That's what we're going for, contrarianism here. But there's so many other different ways you can go here. Like, I think Philly makes a great stack. Arizona makes a great stack. Boston makes a great stack. There's just so many good options for bats. That's why in cash, I'm taking two solid pitchers. Hopefully, everybody's spread out on bats. Um, hopefully, Tampa Bay destroys Oakland. And, and puts up a lot of runs. They've been a little bit silent recently. Hopefully they, they wake up here and, and put up like a football score on them and we're all set and, and have a great night. For GPP, for FanDuel, give me Lizardo again. And then I am taking Arizona and Boston. They fit together so well. I can get a complete stack on both sides and I'm very happy with it. Actually, I, yeah, even, even with shortstop, I think I got it figured out if not then i might have taken a punt there because that's the trouble with arizona is you need to find a great team um to match up with them because they're weak at shortstop but uh Pradermo probably will be in um if it's a uh, amand um he's just more of a defensive shortstop so i'm okay going with a one-off in the shortstop position uh, i've named some really good ones that you can throw in there like schmidt or like um i don't know if uh duran is shortstop eligible from texas on uh fan duel or not but uh that's where i'm going today so again 
Lots of ways to go with the bats. Pitching, I think, you know, you have five great options there in Eflin, Miller, Lazardo, Webb, and Paxton. Um, Paxton and Miller are probably my favorite, followed by Lazardo. Eflin's just so hard to get to, but I th- again, it's a great matchup, and then Webb would be fifth there. And bat wise, I think, you know, Tampa Bay, just pricing wise and, and the spot they're in against Oakland and Oakland bullpen are, are the best. But Boston with the wind blowing out, love the lefties there. Texas, I think, in a great spot. Arizona always does well. And then Philly's very intriguing also. So, and then, you know, if you want to get crazy on the slate too, you've got St. Louis, the Angels, um, maybe even a Colorado stack to be contrarian. Like, there's so many different ways to go here. So, um, hopefully it's an exciting night. And I think it's great because I hate those nights where everything is so clear. There's a chalk cash build. Everybody's going to have a hundred thousand duplicate lineups and then you split a double up. Um, and then, you know, you don't even break even because so many people had it that you don't even double up your money. So, uh, that's what I got for you today. So I love doing this and hopefully talking through this has helped you out. So, but if you have additional questions, you can always put them in the chat below. Hit me up at megaro 31 on Twitter. If you want more information on FSI DFS, go to the description of the video and um, all the information is there, how to sign up for our packages on our website. And if these videos continue to help you, we are so close to, I believe it's uh, 43 hundred subscribers on our way to getting to 5,000 subscribers. And we hope to do that by the end of baseball and NASCAR season. Um, if not this year, next year, but uh, we have some cool incentives potentially to go there. So as we get closer, as we get more people subscribing, then uh, we'll start to announce what those are, are going to be. So we really want to reward you for watching the videos, not just with the content that we're bringing you to help you out, but also um, just to thank you for your loyalty. So that's a great reason to subscribe to the vi- our channel if you haven't already, so you know when the videos are going to come out. And uh, please like the video, share with your friends, and um, really appreciate you tuning in um, to watch these videos and the great feedback that we've gotten from all the viewers to um, the things you like about it and the things that we can add to help you out so thanks again for watching good luck on your in your contests hope everybody has a good monday and i'll see you next time